Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I turn this nightmare into this. All right, sit tight. While we watch the way longer than I make it look process of breaking down two sheets of plywood into their respective 65 pieces to build this project, let me remind my returning viewers and inform any new viewers that if you like this project or any other project you see me build on this channel, that I have a free set of plans available for download on my website, diybuilds.ca. So now that we've got all the pieces cut out for the frame of the cabinet, as well as all 10 drawers, let's go ahead and start assembling these 10 drawers. Now there's six of these shallow ones, three of the regular ones or medium ones, and one really big one on the bottom of the cabinet. So to build these, I first got my frame here. I'm just going to put glue in each of the four corners, throw in two brad nails into each corner, and then I'm going to be placing this bottom, obviously the drawer is upside down right now, on top, glue it down, and then finish it off with a bunch of crown staples, like every three inches or so. That's gonna make this really strong and extremely easy to build. And just like that, all 10 drawers are made. The last thing I'm gonna to do to this very deep bottom drawer is I'm gonna add a two inch screw into each top corner here, just for a little bit of extra insurance. So now that the drawers are done, you see I have my four cabinet pieces laid out. I have the top and bottom, we don't need right now. And then I have my two side pieces, which are laid front to front, both tops right here. Here I have a drawing showing the center of all 10 of the drawer slides that need to go on this side and this side. I'll just simply mark the measurement right here, transfer it to both pieces, and then I'll use a square to draw a line extending across. That way we can mount these full extension soft closed drawer slides in the correct spot and they won't be twisted in any way. So because the drawer slides need to be set back from the front a quarter inch, I've made up this piece of plywood with a quarter inch piece of plywood on the front and I'm just going to draw a line all the way down. You could do the same thing with a combination square, whatever you want to do. So now these guys need to get mounted here, centered on our line. Again, that quarter inch space back. I'm going to pull out the slide like that. This will expose our mounting screws here, here, and this one doesn't have a center one because of the soft close mechanism. It has to be mounted here or here. And what I've got here are number eight half inch button head screws or pan head screws. And I'm not going to pre-drill holes or anything like that. I'm just going to drive them right in. This is plywood. It's not going to split or anything. It'll be just fine. Now the secret to driving in these screws and not blowing out the holes is to not use an impact, but instead use your drill with the clutch at the appropriate setting so it's just tight enough. Well, as I just found out, these pan head screws will not fit in here, so I'm gonna to have to go ahead and use my countersink ones to just get inside those holes. And it didn't come out the back, perfect. So over here at the router table, I have a flat bit set up to create a rabbit along the back side of all four of the case pieces. This is gonna allow for us to inset the back panel, which is where all the strength of the unit's gonna come from to prevent it from racking side to side. Yes, I should have done this before mounting the drawer slides, but because we're already mounted, I'm not taking these off. I just have it spaced off a little bit further and this should work just fine. So now we're going to assemble the case, which is just these four pieces. I have the back side facing up. That way, once this is assembled, I can slap the back on easily. I won't have to flip it over. It also keeps our front edges nicely aligned with the flat table. So I'm just going to stand up the sides, 
put glue along the edge, hold everything together with my me nailer, and I'll have my square in the corner to make sure nothing is moved. And then I'll come back, drill some holes, and install five two inch screws, and that's how we'll reinforce these joints. You don't wanna go ahead and move these with just the screws and everything in place as it will wanna rack on you. The strength is really gonna come from that back panel being attached. So with the case put together, I wanna to get the back piece cut to width and length, and I'll get those measurements right from the inside of the rabbits here, as that eliminates any kind of error there could be from any mistakes that I may or may not have made. So 25 and a half inches on the width, and we'll get the length and cut it to size. So the dry fit went well. Now to install the back piece, I'm gonna be going very heavy with the glue, and then keeping everything in place with some half inch crown staples every three inches or so. So now it's on to mounting the drawers. First thing we need to do is insert our 1 8 inch spacers. This is some hardboard here, so it's exactly 1 8 of an inch thick, which is what we call for in the design. Then I'm gonna pull out my drawer slides right here, and then I'm gonna place my drawer in between them facing down. Then we can push these drawer slides back without letting them collapse on themselves and pull it out just enough so that we can see our first screw point. Press this flat and then I've got a block here that ensures that the drawer slide is completely flush. Then we can drive in our first screw on either side. And now we can pull this out a little bit further and reveal the next set of screws. I can pull it all the way out. Now, thankfully on these particular drawer slides, I can get to the last screw location back here without having to pull these entirely out. And remove our spacers. And we'll just put these on top of this installed drawer and do the next one. Simple as that, we just keep going till all of them are installed. Okay, so you see we have a problem with the last drawer here. It's not gonna quite fit. And that's okay because in the design, I accounted for this drawer being a little bit thicker because there's some air in here with the thickness of plywood and all that. So I made this a little bit oversized. So now we'll go over to the table saw, set my rip fence to take about a quarter of an inch off and this thing should fit perfectly. Time for the big flip and try it out. Looks pretty good. So the next step is gonna be cutting up our drawer fronts, which is gonna be made out of this piece right here. We'll try to have the grain continuity going through it so it looks like one big ugly piece of plywood. So over here, I've got laid out with grain continuity all of my drawer fronts. So I'm just gonna take them one by one, place them on here, and to attach them, I'm gonna be putting some hot glue in the middle, some wood glue on the outside, as the hot glue will hold it in place while the wood glue sets over the course of about half an hour. And then I'm gonna come back, and same thing, I'm gonna mark out the location of our drawer pull handles and just glue them on, simple as that. Okay, so now I'm gonna make my infamous trapezoid handles that I use on all my shop furniture, as well as my computer desk, which I'm simply just gonna run some boards through at an inch and a quarter thick at 15 degrees on both sides, then cut them to length about six inches or really however long you wanna make the handles and that's it, we'll get them attached to the drawer fronts. So 
So the next thing I want to do over here at the table saw is start making the edge banding to cover up all of our plywood. Now this is going to be an L-shaped edge banding to cover both sides of the plywood as I like that chunky look that it's going to create on the tool chest. I have inch and a quarter square stock ripped down to length here. Now I've got my blade set at three quarters of an inch high, three quarters of an inch out, leaving that square cut out in the corner. So we have about a three eighths of an inch reveal from the outside. So I'll go ahead and rip a corner out of each one of these pieces. Then we'll start cutting them to length and edge banding out the tool chest. So we're here at the router table and I have a chamfer bit set up here and I've decided on all these pieces I'm going to put a chamfer on the outside edges here as well as the very corner. Just a little decoration, hopefully it makes it look that much nicer. So now on to mounting the drawer handles and I want them centered vertically and horizontally on the drawers. So I've got this spacer right here which helps me exactly center it in this direction and I've just marked out with some pencil marks along the bottom side of the handle where I need to line things up. Now to attach these I'm going to put a little strip of glue on the back and then keep everything in place with some pin nails while the glue dries. Okay, now it's time to mount these swivel casters. I've got two locking ones for the front and two regular ones for the back as you won't be able to access that when it's pushed up against something. So why have locking in the back? Now, because of this trim being three eighths of an inch, I've got this spacer, this quarter inch piece of plywood and this one eighth inch piece of hardboard. And this is gonna get us to the same level. Otherwise, this locking mechanism would hit the trim even though we're mounting the screws back here. So we're just gonna get some glue on here, use some crown staples to keep that in place. And then we'll use these one inch screws right here, four on each swivel caster, and that's how we'll mount the screws. So our second to last step is going to be giving everything a nice sanding and thanks to my friends over at Viver who sent me over this brand new random orbit sander here, it's going to be a breeze. Now the nice thing about this thing is it also comes with a six inch attachment, which is pretty sweet. Now I have to go out and buy a bunch of six inch sanding discs, but anyways, this should be a breeze. We'll just get everything nice and smooth. And just like that, this sucker is totally smooth to the touch thanks to the Viver sander. If you want to get your own, check the link in the description. Get one today. Now on to our final step. So the last thing I want to do to the tool chest is put in drawer liners. So what I have here is rubber floor mat that I got from Home Depot. You can buy this by the foot. It's pretty cheap. I'm just going to cut it up with the utility knife to the exact size of the drawer bottom and slip it in place. If I find it's moving around or something, I'll glue it down, but I think it'll be fine just dropping it in place. Simple as that. We'll do this nine more times and shove her in.